We've covered the coronavirus in the United States and around the world. It's important that we talk about the facts to make you as informed as possible. So today we have Ruth Carrico with the U of L School of Medicine, a nurse practitioner, among other things, expert in infectious diseases. And we've been saying to do the essentials, wash your hands, cover your cough. Is there anything else that we should be doing? Well, yeah, I think you covered the basics and yeah. then clean hands and then recognizing how is this virus transmitted? Uh, touch, so environmental cleaning is really important. Just our routine germicides that we used to clean. But also remembering things like if you're sick, don't go to work. Yeah. That also means like don't go to the grocery store, go to church, go to the mall. That means stay home so you're not involved in transmission. And then right. let other people know why you're sick. So we can begin to look at, you know, are there relationships? Uh, that are going on. Also, we still continue to say, get your flu shot. Right, get I know. <laughs> and so something that actually you were talking to me about that is really interesting is I've just been hearing it, the symptoms are similar to the flu or they're, it's just like getting a flu. What do you say to that? Well, I think that it's certainly a virus, so it's like the flu in that the influenza virus you know, yeah. causes some of these very basic symptoms. I, I feel very poorly. But the thing that's different about coronavirus is it just has a, a propensity to affect the lungs. Mm. And so we don't often see people become young people that are healthy become seriously ill with influenza. We see that with coronavirus. So it certainly is different. Mm -hmm. It does have that similarity. It is a respiratory and environmental contaminating um, uh, infection, um, but it is, it is distinctly different from influenza. And I was recently talking to some children who were expressing a lot of concern. How, how do you talk to children about this? Because it's a scary thing. It absolutely is, and I think that that really is a skill. How do you make sure that children feel safe? They need to know that it is, you know, that, that their community, their parents, right. and others are watching out for them. It's also important that we're honest with our kids mm -hmm. and that, yes, you know, we are dealing with this as a community, but my job as your parent, as your teacher, mm -hmm. as others that care for children is to keep you safe, and that's our job, and we're going to do it. Okay, so. perfect. Travel plans. A lot of people have travel plans. Yeah. Do you cancel them? Do you rethink them? Reschedule? What are we supposed to do? Well, you know, we're seeing this right now as we, we operate the yeah. University of Louisville International Travel Clinic. So we are seeing people that are traveling internationally, have plans uh, to travel, and we're talking with them a lot about, you know, personal decision making, risk, benefit. Mm -hmm. But I think above all, remember those basics, hand hygiene, environmental disinfection, stay away from people if they're sick, kind of keep that social distance. But then also think about, all right, if I'm somewhere and I get sick, what's my exit plan? Make sure Very that I have point. a process. And versus domestically and globally. Right, right. So locally, if we become ill, if and or when we begin to see more cases in the U.S., we're here, we've got support systems, we have a lot of research, like the research that we're doing yeah. right now at, at U of L, looking at how do we protect our community. Mm -hmm. If we're going to be sick with a serious illness, I'd rather be in my home community right. where I have the resources and I have the backup uh, to help take care of me. And so we've been reporting that the safest distance is to stand about six feet away. Would you say that's accurate? Yeah, I think it's, you know, we always say, you know, maintain yeah. that arm's length. And okay. the reason for that is if I cough, uh, I don't want it to go and you don't want it to go on your face, in your eyes, nose, mouth, because then right. that's how transmission can occur. So keep that distance and then, you and know, use, use a common sense. If you cough, don't. You know, yeah, don't cough, yeah, cover, face. You know, cover it and, right. and keep your hands clean and then recognize when I cough, it goes on the environment. So I've got to keep my environment clean. So all those things our mom told us. It's okay. time to remember them and do them. And real quick, speaking of coughing and face, do the masks work? Well, we know masks provide a barrier. Mm -hmm. So if you cough and I've got a barrier mm -hmm. on, then that can help that, that uh, preventing contact with me. The respirators that we're talking about, those more uh, mm -hmm. fitted um, respiratory protective devices, they're designed to filter out very small particles. Right. When we're dealing with an illness where we, we're still learning about it, mm -hmm. then we're going to go to the highest level of respiratory protection for certain circumstances, for healthcare workers okay. when, when they're working with ill patients, but not for the general public. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being here, Ruth. Right. And if you have questions, the UofL does have an email that they set up where you can write to it and an infectious disease expert will respond to you. That email is coronavirus at louisville.edu. The UofL is also holding a press conference at one o'clock today to talk about this type of stuff. We'll be streaming it on whas11.com and on Facebook.